But at this time, um, you know, we have the next few minutes that we have left. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Ron, uh, where's Ron here? Right here. He has something that he wants to share with us as well. Um, and um, again, I, I just uh, give praise for these kids that are challenging themselves to come up here. And so he's got something that God put in his heart to share. And so uh, we're just going to let him do and share what God has for, for you guys. So there you go. Hey, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> uh, my name's Ronnie, and so everyone asked me if I wanted to talk, and I said, sure. So here I am. Uh, so I'm going to tell a little story real quick. So I work on a farm um, as a part-time job. That's what I do, and one of our cows just had a baby, if you could pull up the picture. So that's Micah. She's like the leader of all the cows, and she just had a baby. That baby is three days old. And it's just a small little baby. And it doesn't really know what anything is. Like, when I started working there, all the cows were kind of afraid of me. And this baby doesn't know what's going on. It'll just let me touch it and do whatever. But we put our trust in God, just like that little baby's putting trust in its mama. Um, we, God will protect us. He'll provide for us. He'll teach us. And he will make us the person that he wants to be or wants us to be. And... He'll always protect us and be with us no matter what happens. And the only thing that I can think of that Micah didn't do for her baby or can't do is she can't really comprehend future plans like God can. And there's another verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's a very famous verse. Uh, it says, I alone know the plans I have for you, plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster, plans to bring about the future you hope for. And... So God will protect us, provide for us, and teach us all these things to prepare us for the future that he has planned for us. And um, no one can stop, God's, uh, can stop the plan that God has for you. Or, although I say that, I've always said this, the only person that can stop it is you if, when you don't trust God. That's why you have to put your trust in God just like that little baby puts his trust in its mom. So I think that's all I got. And um, yeah, so... Praise God. Good job. You know, we're going to bring him up here more often, so I know he's got more, more to say. Um, I remember the first time I asked him to share something with the youth, and uh, I was just like, oh, wow, he, he can speak. Yeah, he, he's got some words. And so, but I know he got his experience. You know, being up here is not easy because, you know, everybody's just, you know, looking at you. And, and um, but... Uh, before I get started, I just want to, I don't know if there's any uh, of the uh, family members of, of, of the uh, seniors that graduated this, this, uh, this year, but congratulations. If you're watching online, we uh, congratulate you for uh, graduating from high school. It just reminds me, when I graduated in 1998, you might think like, ooh, that's not a long time. Well, for me, that's a long time already. So, um, but congratulations to the families and all the students. And, uh, uh, you know, and again, thank you to the youth that has been participating uh, today, uh, we truly, really appreciate that. So, but in the next few minutes that we got left, um, we're going to have to adjust the time here. So, first of all, I want to just thank the Lord for the opportunity that He's given me to share the Word of God quickly here. So, uh, I know that um, God has something either tiny or big, however that is, for each and one of you. And um, uh, I'm just uh, delighted to just uh, share something with you this morning. So, um, you know. For me, as I'm sitting there and seeing all the things that are happening, many of you already know, it's, it's, just, like a, it's just like a miracle, basically, honestly, for me to stand here and, and being able to see my kids, my family, and all of you uh, here today. And so I believe that this morning, you know, with the time that we have left, um, I want to share something about that something new is on the way. And I want you to just turn on that DVD and just, you know, come with me and let's all be in, in one, one, just the one thing. But um, there's always... Uh, there is always a great feeling when you know that something new is coming. I don't know about you, but there's always that feeling that, you know, something new is going to happen, and I'm excited, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, uh, either you're about to receive good news, or you're about maybe uh, uh, to uh, work on something that maybe you've been wanting to work on for, for a while, or maybe you've been working, working so hard on something, and finally the results of that are like coming back, and you're, you're about to see something new happening. We all get excited about that. <clears throat> or maybe you are about to retire. You know, I, again, I share this, that 
one of my neighbors, when I used to live in Chelan, <clears throat> one day he woke up and he was very happy. He was mowing his lawn and he was singing and I never heard him, I never heard him singing. And I said, neighbor, how are you doing? And he says, oh, I'm doing great. And I said, what, what happened? I said, you're just more than happy than other days. He says, you know, it's because I'm retiring next week, and I'm just excited. And then he just stopped, and he looked at me. He says, oh, boy, you got a long way to go. And I said, <laughs> I said thank you very much, right? So, um, you know, but we get excited about things. So uh, maybe you will become a father for the first time, and you're just anxious to see the baby. I remember the first time, and I told my wife, oh, I don't know if I should be nervous, scared, or excited. or I mean, there's all things going on, but... Uh, we we'll always get excited <clears throat> when there is something new on the way. As humans, we are always seeking for something new, better opportunities, a better life, a better job, you know, just better, better ourselves and everything that we can. Um, and, uh, but new is always better when it comes to God. And we should all agree on that. We could get excited about things and all the stuff that's going on and everything else, but when it comes to God... Everything that will be new, we should get excited about. Amen. Amen. We might get excited of all the things, you know, all the things that goes around, but when it comes to God, we better get excited because God is about to do something great in our lives. Now, there's a Bible verse in Isaiah 43, 19, and I'll just, I'll use that part of the story uh, that says the following, you know, talking about the prophet Isaiah speaking to the people of Israel. Uh, and he said this, uh, I'm going to read this verse only. It says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Did you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and steams in the wasteland. So what new things God wants to do in your life or in my life? You know, we probably think about that. Well, I feel like God has done already a lot of things, great things, and, and I've done it all, but what else can God do in my life? Well, when Isaiah prophesied over, over Israel, the Israelites were in captivity. And so many of you have read this passage in Babylon. Um, you know, they've been uh, there for years and years after years, and they made so many mistakes. They struggled. They went through, you know the story. Just a lot of things happened in there. And, um, they, you know, they make bad mistakes, bad decisions. Um, but Isaiah told them, forget about the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See that there is new things coming. The main thing here, when Isaiah was talking to these people, you know, is if you get stuck in the past, you will never see the new things. And again, I don't think that that only applies for a younger generation, but that applies to everybody in general in here because I believe that God is always pushing us to experience something new, something that we never seen, something that, that he still wants to do in our lives. And so um, if you focus on who hurt you or what wasn't fair and why your friends left you, then you're going to miss the purpose for your life. And how many times does that happen to us? You know, somebody hurt us, somebody say something about us, and we just tend to just stay there and say, oh, I'd I'm going to get back to that person because that person didn't, shouldn't say that about me and, and so and so. You just kind of live every day thinking like, well, I'm going to avoid that person because I don't want to talk to that person no more. And so uh, we are missing God's purpose for our lives and the new things that he's got for us. God is saying, forget the former things. Forget the past. I'm doing something new. But the question is why? Because living in regrets will keep you away from new opportunities. I've experienced that when I was younger and I went through situations in my life and I just kind of hold on the, to me like, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to talk to this person. I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. But I, you know, I did regret doing that because I was holding myself from experiencing new opportunities that Jesus Christ had for myself. I think about, again, my childhood, uh, being a kid in, in, uh, I had in my mind to just grow up, live in that area, and not go anywhere, and not challenge myself to do something. But I thank the Lord. I praise the Lord, because that day that my parents decided to come to the U.S., uh, I could have just said, Dad, no, let's just stay here. Uh, let's not go anywhere. But we challenge ourselves to, like, let's go and explore something new. And um, I believe that if we wouldn't challenge ourselves to do something different, I would not be standing here. 
I came here without knowing the language, without, you know, knowing the culture, without knowing anything here, and I challenged myself to do that, and that's the reason that I've been experiencing all these opportunities that Jesus has for us and for my family, so I choose to believe that there is something new waiting for me and for you. As I began uh, walking towards God, you know, even when I was falling short from the God, when I was doing all the mistakes, you know, I'm now experiencing the fullness of God, trusting Him, even when everything is not going the way I want it to be. And again, you know why I say that, because I still remember the doctor a few months ago, uh, a year ago, you know, calling my name and saying, Mr. Alejo, you, uh, we found cancer in you, and there's really not that much we can do. You know, there's, this is what, what we can offer, this is what will happen, and this is it. Three months later, they called us again, and they said, you know, your wife also has a, a cancer that it's, it's spreading, and, and we can give her three to four years, and that's all we can do. We cannot even do surgery. We can't do anything about that. We can, we can either choose to believe, or we can either choose to just stay, you know, depressed and just not do anything about it. But I thank the Lord that, you know, we have challenged ourselves to uh, experience what God has for us during this season of our lives. And the greatest thing, you know, honestly, uh, reading this passage, again, when it says, forget the former things, do not dwell on, on the past. See, there is something new on the way. You know, every morning that I, uh, that I wake up, I always look forward to what the Lord is doing in our family. Yes, I go to bed praying, God, we thank you for another day. Thank you for, for healing. Thank you for what you've done in our lives. But I wake up every morning thinking, God, what is new? What is coming up this morning? What a good thing is going to happen to us today. And I believe that God has something Prepare for each and one of you and all of you that are watching online as well. You know, God is about to do something great in your life. He didn't create you just to stay in one spot. I believe that he created you with a purpose, with something that he wants to fulfill in your life. So, you know, even if maybe you've been struggling financially, maybe you've been praying for that job, well, get ready because I believe that maybe that promotion that you've been waiting for, God is about to do that. Maybe you've been praying for something that, that, that hasn't happened yet, but God is about to make it happen for you. And even if the doctor's diagnosis was this sickness is permanent and it's not going to go away. Well, I'll tell you what. Jesus Christ can change that around and it will. Amen. Something new will happen. Amen. God created us for something good. Not to live in fear, but to look ahead and experience God's victories. Period. Amen. I believe that God's intentions are not for us to live in fear, with, especially with this whole pandemic that we been experiencing for the last, what, two and a half years already? You know, many people, I believe, <coughs> has, has, excuse me, have, have gone through situations, not just because of the COVID, but because of all the fear that has been happening around us. And God has not given us a spirit of fear. But who will experience the new? You know, thinking about this is like, all right, everybody wants to experience something new, right? But who will experience the new? Now, this is what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So who will experience the new? Anyone that's in Jesus Christ. Anyone that's, that has accepted him as Lord and Savior. Forget about what's happened don't keep going over the old things. Stop looking back. You know, stop looking behind and, and start looking forward. Why? Because if you are a new person in Jesus Christ, he, has, he is going to make new things for each and one of you. Whatever that is that you've been praying for, that you've been waiting for. Um, but we need to change that focus. We need to change that focus. And just like, uh, think about the, um, the, uh, the windshield in your car when you're driving. There's a reason why that windshield is that big, right? There's a reason for it. And it's so we can see clearly, so we can see what's coming ahead. Now, there's also a reason why we have the rear mirrors, right? So we can see the things that already passed, things that are not important for us. 
And so we got to change our focus and always look at what's coming ahead, what God has for us. You know, what are the things that we need to do to change our focus? What is it that we need to do? So I believe that God is making rivers, in, rivers of life in your life so you can stay in faith. Because again, we are struggling, we're going through so many different situations in our lives that only Jesus Christ can change. We need to accept God's calling in our lives. I remember a pastor told me, like, you know, would you like to maybe preach or be a pastor one day? And I'll tell you what, the first thing that went through my head, I was like, yeah, uh, no, I don't want to do that. You know, but I don't want to be like out there being in charge of, of sharing and speaking and all of that. And I just, I'm, I'm good where I'm at. I think I was playing the drums at that time. I was like, I'm good right there. You know, that, that's good enough for me. And, uh, but God is, is, is giving you a calling, and maybe some of you already have been feeling the knock in your heart where God, God has been saying, hey, I'm calling you maybe to go and, and, and uh, uh, evangelize somebody or just share the good, good news with someone, or hey, I'm calling you to maybe come and help out uh, in some area in the church or do something, or hey, I'm calling you to um, <clears throat> maybe work within the children's ministry or the youth ministry or who knows god has a calling for you that i believe maybe you've been resistant to that but we need to accept god's calling because there's something new that he wants to do in your life so every morning we need to start with hope and faith and let god guide us in everything that he has for us and i'm trying to rush it in here because i know we have a little bit of time <clears throat> left the new things we are experiencing might not be what you were expecting. And I think that happens a lot. You know, sometimes we pray for something and we ask for God, and God gives us something, and you're like, wait a minute, that's not what I've been praying for. God, that's not what I asked you for. But God says, well, this is what you're going to receive for right now, because what you've been asking for, either you're not ready, or either I'm trying to teach you something, but it's coming. It's coming. So sometimes if you've been praying for something and you don't receive that or you don't see it happening, don't think that God is not listening to you. Don't think that God, you know, maybe you're not important enough for God. It's because God's timing is not yet for him to deliver that to you. Our family, since we uh, heard the news from the doctor, we truly believe and we started praying and believing and activating our faith in a day went by, a week went by, a month went by, and nothing was happening. But again, I give testimony a few weeks ago uh, of how things really are right now. And I believe, I believe that God, when he starts to do something, he will finish it. And so I know that God's plans for my, for my life, <clears throat> for my family, for my wife, are great plans. And I know that, uh, yes, when you hear the word cancer and you think about that, you're like... Oh, that's something that's going to get stuck with you forever. Nothing's going to change. Well, maybe that's what we've been thought about that. But when it comes to Jesus, when he does something, he does it perfectly fine. And I know he will do it if that's his will. So I want to just conclude real quick because uh, we don't have a whole lot of time. And just mentioned and let you know, don't be discouraged. If everything still looks dark and nothing has changed in your life, young people, or anybody that's listening, just know that there's always light at the end of the tunnel. And that's something that, you know, my family and I have been practicing. <clears throat> when everything seems to be dark and nothing's really happening, there's got to be an ending. There has to be an ending. And if God is still not calling you to be with him, then sooner or later we're going to get to the end. We're going to find the light again, and we're going to find out that what we've been going through, at some point, Jesus will give you the victory. God's desire for all of you who are here this morning, or anyone who's watching online, is for you and your family to be blessed and experience the new that Jesus has prepared for you. Again, I believe that God has something new that he wants to do in your life, but we have to be ready for it. <clears throat> Just like the people of Israel who made many bad choices, bad mistakes, and they fall short from God, you know, and all of that. But they believe what the prophet Isaiah said to them. 
and they received it. So again, if God has been speaking to you and you're like, God, but I don't know if that's, that's for me. I don't know if I'm ready for this. God, I don't know. I really don't know. Just, just be ready. Because if God is knocking at your heart, if he's been calling you for something, you know, it's because he wants to do something new in your life. Again, it doesn't matter if you're 15, 20, 40, 50, 60 years old. God can still use you to make an impact in somebody's life. Don't live and stay in the past and the things that hurt you. Let's remember that because that's going to happen so many times. Probably maybe someone will make a comment that is not even meant for you and somehow that affected you. You know, don't take that personally, you know. If something happened, just let it go. You know, I talk to my kids and I say this all the time. You know, you go to work and you experience all these different things. Maybe, maybe there's just issues going on. You know what? Just leave it back there. Give it to the Lord because, you know, the more you keep thinking about that, the more stressed you're going to be. But if you give that to Jesus, if anything has happened to you, you know that you're going to be happier and you need to be happier because, honestly, you can't be going around, you know, being upset or, 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 or stressed. Or, you just got to be happy. Amen. Because that's what Jesus is teaching us. So if you experience loss in the past, And nothing has fulfilled the emptiness. Jesus Christ is here to do that for you. And I know we've gone through so many situations in our lives. We lost maybe family members. Maybe we've uh, experienced things that we feel that we're marked for the rest of our lives. Well, if you're still dealing with that emptiness, with that hurting of anything, just give it to the Lord. Because Jesus is here to fulfill that and just to let you know how big his love is for each and one of you. Church, God is good. Amen? God is good. And I, 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 uh, I'm a witness of that. I'm, I'm a witness knowing that even though when everything does not go the way I want it to be, Jesus Christ will remain good to us in every situation. So if anyone is here today, if anybody is watching online and you guys have not made the decision yet or maybe you maybe you kind of run away a little bit from the Lord and you just kind of come in every other Sunday thinking like, oh, that's good enough for me. I'll tell you what, God has something new for you, but we need to be on fire for God. And so if you have not made the commitment, we always say this, Pastor Craig says always, uh, that, you know, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you're thinking about it, maybe you've been hearing about that a little bit, then this is the day to do it. This is the day to do it because, again, um, like I read in the Bible verse, you know, that if anyone is in Christ, you will experience the new. So if you are not born again and you want something new to happen, I don't know if that's going to work for you that way because only through Jesus Christ we can experience what he has for us and fulfill the whatever needs are happening in our lives. So I challenge you this morning. There's something new that God wants to do in your life, and we just got to be ready for it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Dear God, I just want to thank you for these young people that were challenged this morning to come and share something and share their hearts to you, my God. And not only that, but to know that there is something new for us, for this church, for this valley. And I want to just pray that if there's anybody watching online or they're here today and they've been wanting to do something, they've been hearing your voice, that they respond to that today. That they respond to you, my God, with a calling that you have for their lives. God, I pray for... uh, specifically for every person that's in this room. God, we are the light of this earth. We're the salt for this earth, my God. And we cannot do anything without you, Jesus. But with you, we can do everything. With you, God, we can conquer anything, my God. And I pray that as a church, we rise, we got up, and we just stand up on the front line, my God. And pray for all those people that need to be prayed for, my God. All those people that need to hear the good news that we 
stand up and we're able to speak up the good news because you have something new that's coming before you come back again, Jesus. God, we thank you for this time and we thank you for, for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.